Ladies and gentlemen, we thank you for your patience. We are just waiting for some immediate family members. And as we do wait, we thank you, uh, jo those joining us by live stream. We thank you for your patience. We just want to give the family a few more moments to arrive, and then we will get started. So thank you.
So ladies and gentlemen, we're just about to get started. For those partaking in service, I'm going to ask you to come to this microphone and speak directly into the mic so that the live stream guests can also hear you nice and clearly. Again, we are just about to get started. And, oh, okay, all right. Uh, greetings, everyone, and we're here today, um, just about ready to start. We pray that the blessings of God will be upon us and upon this occasion today. My name is um, Evan St. Aubin Nunes. I am from Triumphant Church of Jesus Christ, of course, who sends their greetings and condolences to everyone today. Greetings to Mr. Roy Morris. Amen. Nadine Malcolm, Nadine Malcolm and family, and certainly the rest of the family of Mistress Gloria Morris. We are here today to share in the homegoing service of uh, Sister Gloria. Please understand that this small gathering is due to the restriction um, due to COVID-19. Traverend Church of Jesus Christ is located at 5 Greensboro Drive, and we invite you to our services as time goes along. Sister Gloria Morris has been a member of our church for many years, and we do thank God, amen, for her. So at this time, we would just go right into our program, and we want to welcome everyone here uh, today. Certainly, uh, Mr. Morris and your daughter also, Denise, thank you very much, and every one of you today in the name of the Lord. We're going to have a hymn, It Is Well With My Soul, and certainly um, because of COVID today, we're not allowed to sing, so it will be played over the video for us in the name of the Lord Jesus. The hymn will be, It is Well With My Soul.
stand and pray if you don't mind heavenly father our lord and our god how excellent is thy name in all the earth we do glorify your name today we thank you for life we thank you for this opportunity amen to come before you even though on a sad occasion but god your name will be praised in all the earth we thank you today god almighty for the life that sister morris has lived and we pray, God, that as you see it fit, you saw it fit to take her home. Oh, God Almighty, it is well with her soul. We pray in the name of the Lord that you'll continue to bless her family, her husband, and everyone today, God, that will mourn for her, that the peace of God will rest in their hearts, the mercies of God will appeal to them, to their spirit. Oh, God Almighty, and the blessedness of the Lord will reign upon them, for we say thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. 
Amen. You may be seated at this time. Amen. The daughter of uh, Sister Morris, uh, Miss Nadine Malcolm, will come and she will read for us 1 Corinthians 15, 50 to 58, and also do a poem in the name of the Lord. Okay. Now I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, nor does corruption inherit incorruption. Behold, I tell you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye. At the last trumpet, for the trumpet will sound and the dead will be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corrupt, corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible has put on incorruption and this mortal has put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is your sting? O Hades, where is your victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But, the, but thanks be to God, who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast, immovable always, abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that your labor is in the, is in the Lord. Um, when I read this passage earlier in my Bible, there was a poem beside it that I'm going to read. Um, it says, O oh Lord, I have lived this day to bury one I love. My gratitude is as full as the grief and peace, as is the deep as my pain. All because of you. I need you as never before. Shepherd my soul through these dry and heavy days. You send us to certain earth, you send us to this earth for a season, and then you receive us again unto yourself. I understand this cycle, but I wasn't quite ready to let go of this one as I thought I'd be. All my life I've known that some but someday this would happen, but the finality and the reality of it are piercing. One thing I know that death cannot kill love and human's hands can't bury it. On this, my loved one's resurrection day, I give you praise for a life lived well. Now Tiana's gonna read a poem. As you step out today, may angels lead you, may peace accompany you, may grace um, go before you, may love and light surround you, may goodness and love follow you, may lessons teach you, may family support you, may friends encourage you, may God protect you and bless you, and may your day be filled with love, peace, and joy. Thank you very much. God bless. We know it's hard uh, on a day like this, but we do praise God for his mercy and for his love towards us. Amen. Good afternoon. Yes, um, I'm not a man of a lot of speech, but Miss Gloria, she is a very nice lady. And I have to say something for her. I know that is a thief. He's still away, Miss Gloria, from us, but what we're going to do? She always, you know, she, Miss Gloria, she have good, good ways. She love all her grandkids. She loved me the first day she see me. She accept me. And she, ac she accept me and um, she said to Nadine, when she meet me, she said, Nadine, this is the one. And I remember I always get my soup Saturday evening time. She always send a porridge for the kids. You know, she's a very nice lady. Thank you very much. Heartfelt, 
we thank God. So we're going to ask our friend, our director, to play again for us, Blessed Assurance. And right after this, amen, we'll have our eulogy read by Hugh Anderson. Thank you very much. morning, or should I say good afternoon, not sure what time it is. <clears throat> Before I introduce myself, the family would like to first say thank you to all who are here today, virtually and in person, to celebrate the life of Gloria Morris. I'm honored to speak at this occasion, but admittingly, I'm a little bit nervous. Um, the big crowd is not here, but I'm sure they're online. I'm not aware of the numbers watching virtually, but I'm sure the numbers are high, which is a testament to how important Aunt Gloria was in many of our lives. <clears throat> I would like to take this time to express my sincere condolences to Nadine, <clears throat> Brother Roy, and the family. My name is Hugh Anderson. I'm a very close family friend for over 40 years. And I'm sure you're all thinking, as you're looking at me right now, this, he doesn't look a day over 40. He looks more like 39. For many of you who knew Auntie Gloria, you knew her as a wonderful woman, compassionate, loving, righteous, with a kind and generous heart. Many of us have reaped the benefits of this generosity over the years. And I, for one, was one of those people. Because for many years, Friday night was Cullfoot night at her apartment. As I reflect on her life and her accomplishments, my hope is that we will be able to accomplish and be the kind of steward, servant of God that she was. In life, it seems that we prepared two resumes, a resume for employment purposes, which consists of our education background, job experiences, and the other resume, also known as our eulogy, which consists of the life we live. Often when we attend funerals and listen to eulogies, there tends to be an emphasis on a person's financial status, employment, and academic achievement in life. However, those earthly accomplishments are not prerequisites for getting into heaven. 
In Mark 10, 25, Jesus says, Again, I tell you, it is easier for a camel to pass through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter the kingdom of God. Though Auntie Gloria did not hold academic degrees, she wasn't the CEO in a large company, or she didn't hold huge financial assets. She was rich in wisdom, knowledge, and understanding, which made her a very smart and wealthy woman. She knew that her riches lay not in earthly things, but rather in her family, friends, and in her God. She knew that, there were, <clears throat> that these were more important qualities to possess in life, and that her good works, a heart for God and others, were essential to eternal life. Auntie Gloria lived a very difficult life, afflicted by asthma, which at times halted her from work and caring for her family. Even with this ongoing stumbling blocks in her way, she never allowed it to hold her back for too long. She would fight through it and bounce back, continuing with her life until the next time. Living with asthma and having setbacks became part of who she was, but she would not let that define her. She never once used it as an excuse to get her out of her responsibilities. She was a fighter. In fact, she was a warrior and she was not gonna let asthma defeat her. Her kind-heartedness, compassion, overflowing fountain of love made it easy for her to put aside her own needs for others. Her perseverance and willingness to fight the good fight pleased God, and that made her a good steward. So as I continue to read Auntie Gloria's eulogy, Keep in mind that her accomplishments are far too great to be measured by man, and therefore, we will have to leave that in the hands of God. Gloria Morris was the daughter of the late George Johnson and Vinabel Williams. She was born on February 13, 1950. Gloria spent her formative years in the district of St. Anne, Churchtown, Jamaica. Gloria was a quiet and peaceful woman who would do whatever it took to support others and maintain good friendships, avoiding any type of conflict or confrontation. I do not think there's a soul who could speak unkindly about her. When Gloria migrated to Canada, she worked various jobs, doing whatever it took to make, to make a living and to support her family. Her final employment stop was at Dell's Pastry, where she worked for over 30 years plus holding various positions. While she was at Dell's, she developed some long-lasting friendships with three of her co-workers, Bev, Doris, and Olive. These relationships would blossom into sisterhood. These ladies were more than friends. In Jamaica, they would refer to them as Bati and Bench. It was not the job that kept them at Dell's. It was the friendship, laughter, and all the good and bad that come <clears throat> with a strong bond and love. I took the time to mention those three ladies because they were very dear to her, and I know she would have wanted them to be spoken about today. They say that you're guaranteed two things in life. One is that you will pay taxes, and the second, of course, we all know is death. As we all know, we have a creation date and also an expiry date on Earth. Well. And to Gloria paid her taxes, and now, too, she has reached her expiry date on earth. And to Gloria Morris passed away peacefully on May 3rd, 2021. She was preceded in death by her father, George Williams, her mother, Finnebel Williams, and son, Dale Simmons. <clears throat> she leaves behind her husband, Roy, Sorry. Daughter Nadine Malcolm. Stepdaughter Denise Morris. Grandchildren Josie, Priscilla, Tyson, Kula Ray, Jaden, Tiana, Aaliyah, Tayshawn, 
great-grandchildren, Elijah, Sophia, Jaden, Jordan, and a host of niece and nephews, cousins, and all the relatives and friends. I know it means the world to the family that you have come today, whether in person or virtually, to celebrate the life of the late Gloria Morris. God bless you all, and thank you for this day. Thank you. Praise God, praise God. Thank you very much, um, Hugh Henderson. Uh, this is a nephew of uh, Sister Gloria. And certainly, um, he has read and expressed himself today in the form of a eulogy um, for Sister Gloria Morris. It is understood that while we live this life, amen, we are writing a eulogy. And certainly, when it comes to a time like this here, it's a time when expressions are made uh, concerning the individual. Certainly, um, from the emotions that have been uh, expressed today, um, we understand that this was a great lady. Uh, she was by our church for a while, amen, uh, and of course you heard through the eulogy that she had a serious case of asthma and later on uh, arthritis and stuff, but you know, I remember um, us going to her apartments on several occasions, taking fruit baskets, uh, praying for her as a church. Amen. The ladies of our church would take good care of her, and she was an exceptionally uh, good person, and we do thank God for her. I thought that today we would have some time for me to do a proper sermon, but I'm going to try and see if I can rush through this as quick as possible because we started late. But certainly we do thank God for the family. Uh, my sermon today would be, Seek the Lord while ye may be found. While he may be found taken from Isaiah 56, verse 6. And certainly, this is the part, amen, that we have come to where we can't say much more for Sister Marsh now because certainly her destiny is already uh, decided. But we must speak to those of you that are still alive, amen, that good words can be said about you when we come to your funeral. And certainly, we have one thing in mind is that Sister Gloria is baptized amen in the name of the lord jesus christ received the gift of the holy ghost and thank god almighty she's gone on to be with the lord and we thank god for her life we are here today to celebrate amen her life the scripture says in verse six and seven seek the lord while ye may be found call ye upon him while he is near let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts and let him that and let him return unto the Lord, and he will have mercy upon him, and to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. While we are alive and live in this earth, um, there's ten things that is very important for us to make sure that we adhere to in our lives. We need to understand the value of time. And certainly, when we heard the eulogy read today, Sister Morris used to be feeding people on Saturday with cow foot. Cow, is it cow foot? <laughs> yes, cow foot day. We thank God for that. So she has taken care of people. Amen. And certainly, she has valued life that she not only look after herself, but she look after others. Number two would be the success of perseverance. Uh, we heard that read in her eulogy today, that even during sickness, she did not allow that to define her, but she lived for God. The pleasure of working. Number four is the dignity of simplicity. And certainly number five, the worth of our character. Number six would be the power of kindness. Number seven, the obligation of duty. Number eight, the influence of being an example. And certainly number nine, the wisdom of economy. And last of all would be the virtue of patience. We understand, and we have seen it in our time, that sickness and death brings home deep reality. And the question, of, the question to life as referred to by David in his distress, when we are young and things are going well, 
we have a tendency to forget about God. We have a tendency to forget the fact that we are not here to stay forever. As the, Mr. Anderson said today in his eulogy, that there's two things on this earth that is certain is death and taxes. Taxes we pay as we go along. Amen. Death happens only once in our life. And here we are today to put, amen, Sister Gloria to rest. And may her soul and her life rest in peace. So we go along as if there is no one like us. But a sheet of sickness brings on reality. And death of loved ones really open our eyes to our frailty. And how vulnerable we are as human beings. For many, the constancy of life's troubles keeps us close to God. But Christian people are kept in remembrance of these facts because certainly on most occasions we hear that from dust we are and to dust shall we return. Let me say this, and I've said this in another sermon the other day uh, at a funeral service. Christians are not insensitive. We're not callous. Amen. Just that we have a hope in God. So therefore, we take life differently. We have a different outlook on life. And certainly when we come to funerals, we also have a different outlook concerning the one that is gone to be with the Lord. The book of Job tells us, or let's go back up to Peter, 2 Peter 3.13, Nevertheless, we, according to his promise, look for a new heavens and new earth, wherein dwelleth righteousness. That's our hope in God. The question that is asked, and this was asked of Job in his sickness, Job 14, verse 14, If a man die, shall he live again? All the days of my appointed time, I will wait till my change come. The answer to this question is, yes, because we don't die like the animals, we don't die like trees. Amen. And certainly there is a life, amen, after death. That's what's important. That's where we have our hope. That's where we encourage people and preach the gospel of Jesus Christ so that, so that folks can have that hope in themselves. In the book of Daniel 12, 1 and 2, it says, And at that time shall Michael stand up, the great prince which standeth for the children of the people, and there shall be a time of trouble such as never was since there was a nation even to that same time. And at that time thy people shall be delivered, every one that shall be found written in the book. And many of them, many of them shall sleep in the dust of, in the, dust of the earth, shall awake, some to everlasting life, some to shame and everlasting contempt. To back that up in the book of Revelation 20 verse 12, John wrote, he said, I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God, and the books were opened, and another book was opened, which is the book of life, and the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works. And certainly, our endeavor, as the scripture goes on to tell us, is to have our name written in the book of life so that we can find peace with God. The scripture that we read tonight, today, said, Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him when he's near. Here is a gracious offer of pardon to mankind. It brings on a peace, happiness, and joy when we accept, amen, this gracious pardon. It shall not be in vain to seek God. Now his word is calling us, and his spirit is striving with our hearts. That's why when we come, amen, to a funeral like this, it brings memories. It brings us memories that will take us to the end of time when we will come to a place like this and we won't be alive. We will be dead and lying in that coffin. Won't be able to defend ourselves or to do anything. But if we make ourselves right before God, we can rejoice as we're rejoicing for Sister Morris today. But there's a day coming. There's a day coming when God will not be found. There may come such a time in this life. It is certain that a death 
and judgment, the door will be shut. There must not be only a change of way, but a change of mind. We must alter our judgments about persons and things. Amen. Even the way we think, when we come to God, we think differently. To repent is to return to our Lord, against whom we have rebelled. If we so, God will multiply, amen, the pardon that he gives to us. And we will have multiplied joys with God. Today we have multiplied offenses. Many of us that are within the sound of my voice. Men's thought concerning sin, Christ, and holiness concerning this world and the other vastly different from God, differ from God, but nothing is more than in the matter of pardon. We thank God for pardoning us. If we take a special view of the church, we shall find what great things God has done. And we will do, amen, to accept Christ as our Savior. The gospel of grace will make a great change in a man. Delivered from the wrath to come, the converted sinner finds peace in his conscience. And love constrains him to devote himself to the service of his God, of his Redeemer. Instead of being profane, instead of being contentious, instead of being selfish, instead of being sensual, we can become patient, humble, kind, and peaceable. The hope of helping in such a work as soul-changing should urge us to spread, amen, the gospel of salvation. There is a life that can be lived, amen, if we accept Christ as our Savior and allow the things of Christ to be our doing and generate in us, amen, a character of righteousness. This will have a profound effect on our views of the fullness, the freeness, and greatness of the rich mercy of Christ. As many, or as may remove, amen, from us all our narrow view of the sovereign grace of Almighty God. Gospel grace will make a great change in mankind. Deliver us from the wrath to come. The converted sinner find peace in his conscience and love constrains him to devote himself to the service of God. We look to God today, the hope of helping in such a work as we are doing today, spreading the good news of salvation and allowing mankind to know, amen, that there is a God, amen, that is willing and blessed and ready, amen, to forgive us of our sins, that we can repent before him the greatness of God. Help us, O oh Lord, today to have such a view of the fullness of God, the freeness of the Spirit, and remove from us all the narrow views of a sovereign God. Let us come to God. Let us be saved. Let us have a change of life. We're going to ask, amen, our funeral director to come forward with remar or remarks, amen, before we should leave this room today. God bless you. But let's take a look in our life. Let's take stock of our lives as we come today, amen, to this gracious funeral service. And may the love of God continue to bless you. Bless his, her husband, bless the children, amen, bless the grandchildren, and every one of you. Because we are all God's children and God's grace is here today. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he's near. Or a funeral director in Jesus' name, amen. Thank you. It concludes the service here for Gloria, and just want to say to the family, thank you for allowing me to serve you, and thank you for entrusting Gloria into our care. As we do depart the chapel now, we will be making our way to Beechwood Cemetery, making a right turn onto Derry, a right turn onto Airport Road, a right turn onto Steeles, 
proceeding all the way down to Jane Street, making a left turn onto Jane, and we'll be making a right turn into the cemetery. For those traveling with us, please obey all rules of the road, stopping at every red light, every stop sign, and that um, just to ensure our safety to cemetery, please put on your high beam lights and your four-way flashers. As we do depart, we will ask Pastor to lead us out the casket, and then the family. We're going to ask everyone to exit directly from the chapel outside, and the pallbearers will meet us just at the doorway area to assist us with carrying the casket. Again, there is a capacity mandate at the cemetery as well, with 10 people at the cemetery. So we do ask, again, to continue to support their family in their time of need. Again, we thank those who joined us on live stream today, and please continue to support their family during their time of bereavement. If we can please stand for departure. Outside. Yeah. <laughs>